This is the Mintlify website at mintlify.com. One thing I like here is the visible structure that's used. It's, it's very subtle, green against green, so it doesn't really draw your attention, but it does help to reinforce the structure of the page. That's quite nice. I particularly like it. Generally, you see these sorts of cross lines. They outline the area or module that the elements are in. In this case, hopefully you can see this with the video compression. These lines are cut across, but they're used as the baseline for the text. So um, that's slightly nicer than the way it's usually approached. And uh, it's a different kind of structure being highlighted. So it, it makes the text feel a bit more grounded on the page. One of the things I appreciate, and I think this is used elsewhere on the website, I'll probably get to that in a second, is uh, this tab bar. You can see that there's different amounts of rounding on this active tab. So if I do this, you've got a, a more squared off tab. If I do this, you can see on the left side, it's fully rounded to match the overall shape of the container. And so that's a sense of things within uh, an area sort of fitting better within that area. And I think that will become clearer as I point out other examples later on. But I quite like that because it makes it all feel a lot more coherent. I assume it's harder to build this way and um, therefore it's slightly more impressive they went to the effort. I quite like this uh, repeated sort of pattern. You can see here there's this uh, lighter, almost shadowy or glassy outline around the Get Started button. The same with this tab container we just talked about and the same with this uh, background for the image you can see here instead of just having the white and maybe with a border around it they've picked it out of the um, the sort of area marked out by these visible structure lines and they've made that darker and uh, what's nice about that is that they've got this white screenshot against what would have been a light green background that might have had some trouble in terms of contrast but here you can see they've uh, improved that by using the visible structure they already had set up and just darkening that area to give this screenshot a bit more contrast against the background. Okay, as I scroll down here, I notice that the visible structure stops here. We'll see if that picks up later. Uh, this is another example of what I was talking about with the, uh, the, the tab container is that you can see here, there's a much larger corner rounding or corner radius on these outside edges than on the inside uh, corners. And it's treating this entire group as its own shape and, and giving it its own corner radius, despite the fact that the corner ra radius is radii. Inside that container are different and, and here as well. So that's quite nice in that it's treated as, uh, let's see, five separate containers, but then it's treating the whole group as essentially one container, giving it its own identity. And I quite like that as a way to make it all feel a bit more coherent and give you an extra visual clue that uh, this group of containers belongs together. I quite like these uh, icons just in front of the, um, the these sort of subheadings. They're also called uh, eyebrow headings, I think. I quite like the icons. They're not really there to draw attention, but they add a little bit more uh, visual flair and reinforce the, uh, the concept. So this is a AI section. You can see in previous sections, I don't think there is any sort of gradient effects, but here they've introduced these gradients. And I assume this is to lean into the uh, visual styles that are often being used for AI across the web. So this is a nice reference to things that other people might have seen, or just to the idea that it's sort of this magical you know, feature using AI. Uh, this helps reinforce what this section is about subtly. I mean, obviously they're saying AI, you know, and GPT. But uh, I also quite like this. It wasn't used before, so it doesn't feel that consistent, but it is consistent with our idea of AI. And so if you've seen similar sections from other websites, this might trigger that association for you. If not, it's, especially you can see it's gently animating. It's giving you this sense that things are working behind the scenes. Things are a bit more sort of magical because of the colors involved and the gradients. I quite like here, uh, I noticed that the visible structure's back, by the way, so it wasn't here in the white section, but it is here in the green section and then down here in the gray section. It's come back and then it's used to 
create some structure for these six uh, sections here. Normally that's really helpful with this sort of um, icon text or icon title and then body text uh, to have this sort of structure because if you've got body text of different lengths, let's say three lines here and just one line here, then this added visible structure helps to make sure people understand how this is all laid out and to make it feel more orderly even though the content is uh, you know different sizes for different sections. Uh, but in this case they've gone to the effort of making sure that the each of these sections has the same sort of height of content. So um, this added structure is unnecessary but maybe at different viewpoints or viewport widths uh, it starts to help and um, yeah, I quite like the visible structure anyway, just because it makes everything feel more laid out. And uh, it also nicely separates the section above, which still has this sort of gentle, I think I can see some gentle background color shifting here. Separates it from that and makes sure you know that it's a, a slightly separate section. Yeah, I quite like the testimonial grid here. Oh, you've got the hover effect. I quite like the testimonial grid here. It sort of calls back to this grid, but it's got its own identity. You can see that they're not using uh, a different corner radius on the outside of this group. And uh, I would assume that's because each of these testimonials is meant to stand alone, uh, but also because they've got this show more section, which uh, expands it all. Oh, and also because the, I can see here that the, the bottom edge of this collection of testimonials isn't flat and so you can't really treat the whole thing as a shape like they have done with this section. Okay I can see here they've got this uh, grey section. This is interesting because every other section like this is full width. This grey one here is full width but then you get down here and you get this not full width. I assume they wanted to... Okay, so perhaps they're treating this white section as a, a full section. They put the testimonials, and then after that they've got the final sort of call to action container. They wanted to give it a bit of a background so that it stood out slightly more. They've got the visible structure in here, which nicely leads into the, um, the background outline for the uh, screenshot. But it's still within this white section along the testimonials. So these two things belong together, even though they've got different emphasis. So yeah, you can see the background here is created again, just like in the um, the first section. So that's a nice echo of what you saw in the hero section, in this final call to action section. Um, but here it's slightly different. The grey background fades away, and so you don't see a bottom edge. It fades away just for the bottom edge of the screenshot, which leads you into the uh, footer. I'm, I'm curious about that effect because you wouldn't have thought it would be necessary to avoid a an obvious lower edge for this container since the only thing below that is the footer which is a separate section anyway but um, it certainly looks good and uh, part of me wonders if this is the case that the this is them sort of signaling that the page is fading away and all that's left is the footer but that's just a guess